loaded. All right, today we're talking about whether or not I should switch away from my trusty Glock 43 and go with the SIG P365. This or this? This or this? Okay, let's see, there we go. All right, welcome back to the Hank Strange situation. I am Hank Strange, yes. And you know what? I'm gonna hand the camera off to Lola today because this is kind of like a vlog style that I usually do, except it may get a little bit complicated. So Lola, take over the, look. No, Lola doesn't want to be seen. I look a mess. Yeah. All right, Lola does not want to be seen. So, you know, we're not, we're not gonna mess around with that and get in trouble today. However, we are here to talk a little bit of EDC, right? A little bit of that. And, and my whole EDC philosophy, basically, there's certain things I feel like you should always have on you, you know? We can go over all the, we can get into the minute details, but I think you should always have your gun on you. There's mine, it's the Glock 43. You should always have that, a backup magazine. I believe um, you should have a knife. Got one right here, right? This is the... Uh, what are these things, Lola? These are the... Uh, Microtech Hellhounds? Yeah, these are the Microtech Hellhounds. <laughs> uh, I, all I know is it's out the front. That's all I care about, really. But Microtech makes good knives. And uh, I think you should always have a light. So here I've got the H1R Nova. And um, that is actually from Olight. It's pretty affordable. I like this because I could clip it on my shirt and stuff like that and then go hands-free. I could turn it on. So now there's other things that you should probably have on you every day um, that you can either carry on body or off body, like uh, a tourniquet, med kit, stuff like that. I think uh, for me personally, I carry those kinds of things off body. I'm talking about what goes in my pockets, what's on my person. So all of that being said, um, there's been, you know, I think in in my uh, my everyday carry is the Glock 43. I'll show it to you guys right there. I think this came out about two years ago at this point. Um, before that was the 42, which was a 380, and I didn't want to like it, but I, I, because I don't really, I found that 380s were not very accurate, but that Glock 42 was the most accurate polymer frame based 380 that I've ever messed around with. So I actually got one, and then when the 43 came out, which is what everyone wanted from Glock, I went with that. Um, I found that I liked how it felt in the hand and all that kind of stuff. The big drawback was capacity, so that's why, um, like here, this is the, uh, this gives you that little extra thumb space on there for your grip, but uh, I wound up going, there's, there's a whole bunch of aftermarket stuff that's out there now, so I wound up going with an extender plate uh, on the base of, of the magazine, which I think brings this up to uh, seven or eight, I think actually eight that you can get in there. So that's been kind of like my thing for the last two years. Now, I'm not trying to say, I know there's people out there that have a bunch of other single stack nine millimeters. There's um, lots of companies out there that works for people, but really I think the Glock 43 kicked off something. And the next thing you know, SIG came out with the P365 last year, and that's what we're looking at here. Um, P365, single stack, but the magazine is a double stack that goes in a single stack feeling uh, handgun, so that's new. There were some problems with these that came out when it came out a year ago, and um, you know that's been well documented from people. So it's been over a year, I have done videos on the P365, but I haven't actually carried one, and I know people out there are asking like, hey, would you switch from the Glock 43 to the P365? That's what we're gonna talk about today. Um, in my everyday carry lineup, I use Harry's holsters. That's what you see here. I got one of those from Harry Harrison, myself, at Harry's holsters. And this is for the P365. It's the executive one clip, and it has this has the metal clip. I can't remember the name of it. I'll run it in, but very durable. Um, it's exactly the same thing that I use on my Glock 43, an executive with a single clip. I'm like, I think I'm like a 330-ish kind of guy in terms of carry. I'm, I'm somewhere in that area. So what, what I like with Harry's holsters is that um, these are 3D designed. There's a lot of thought and engineering that goes into it. Um, 
and I like how like you'll notice this is longer and that kind of like helps it tuck in uh, tighter to the body and makes it less visible under clothing and you know we do have a relationship with Harry's holsters they sponsor the podcast that we do on lifestyles of the locked and loaded so that allows us to get you guys 10% off so just use the code Hank strange at Harry's holsters you'll get 10% off everything except what's on Clarence okay now it decides to drizzle a little bit so we're probably gonna take a quick break because my cameras can't handle drizzle or rain and we'll come right back when it's over so First thing I'm gonna do is try to do like a uh, an accuracy comparison between the Glock 43 and the Sig P365. I'm gonna start with the 43. We're about uh, 10 yards out from the target out there, and uh, I've got my Harry's holster in. I'm gonna chamber this, and I'm just gonna just for the sake of it, just do the practice uh, draw here, just to see if there's any differences. Okay. So here we go. Okay. So that's uh <laughs> So that's from like 10 yards. <laughs> um and that's my that's we can we can uh take a quick look at that. I'm sure you guys can see it. I can see it from here. So that's my accuracy. All right, so let's just try with the SIG. Okay, and uh, it is raining kind of hard. Uh, let me try to do this fast just so that we could get it and then we'll take another break here. Okay, got a jam. Okay. There you go. Um, I think the SIG was actually more accurate. And uh, I'm going to call it right now because it's raining again. We got to take the cameras out of this. But we'll be right back. Look, it's just going to keep raining all day. So we're just going to try to jump in here. I want to confirm. It looks like the. Um, like the SIG was more accurate than the Glock. I really want to confirm that, so I am going to. Man, these are these are nice and wet. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do this again. See if it was just like user error. So there we go. Got that nicely set up right there. And I am going to put in a magazine. I have noticed that the uh, SIG magazines are harder to load. Very stiff. I think that's like a common. Thing that happens with those okay so if you are you ready Lola all right so let's try this again all right let's see here if we get this better this time um, got to go down there so if you look Lola uh, one two right there where I actually hit before I'm aiming at this red dot in case anyone's like, where are you actually aiming? Aiming there. So there's two, three, four, um, all five. Uh, did I just put five in there? I don't know. Maybe I did. But so that's kind of like what my pattern looks like right here. Okay. P365, Harry's holster. There we go. That's a good position for me. And uh, I don't know how many... I'm in that, load it. All right, so let's try this again. See what the SIG does. There we go. All right, let's go down there and take a look. Yeah, um, so there's our new holes. And yeah, it just, I don't know. It's probably in the same kind of areas like I think we hit over there before, you know, um, not to me, they seem like a little bit tighter groups or whatever. Obviously, I'm standing and I'm shooting. I'm shooting rapidly. I'm not taking a ton of time, but um, I don't know. I think the SIG kind of like does a little bit better here. Let's try this again for the third time. 
I put a new brand new target up there. I'm going to shoot the uh, P365 first and uh, we'll see how that is. And uh, I'll go slower this time. I'll go slower just so that we could uh, we could really get a good look at accuracy here. Okay, that was a jam. Jam. Jam was locked back. Okay, so I jacked one out. I'm gonna put that back in. and that did not lock back that time. So let's take a quick look at that. The tape is gonna to be totally useless. But uh, let's try to take a quick look at that down there and see what that looks like. And in case you're wondering, is that my idea of slow? Yes. That's my idea of slow. I know. Whatevs. So, <laughs> um, there's two four, five, and I think six was a little bit high right there. I don't know if that was first or whatever, but that's basically what we're getting right here out of it. Um, uh, let's see. This tape is for shit. Knife. Why you gotta have a knife? Probably should not do this. Let me do that. Lolo says I'm not allowed to cut the tape. So, but my cutting the tape worked, right, Lola? It helped, but now it's a thick piece of tape that I cannot. Don't worry, just. Ah, all right, here. Do you want my knife again? No, that, that's that's okay. Okay, and magazine. Let me throw a couple rounds in here. We are using the Fort Scott munitions, 9mm. You guys, there's a code, it's Hank10, that gets you 10% off at Fort Scott. Good stuff. All right. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Let's go take a look and see how that looks. One time I actually hit right on the, the uh, bullseye outside. You know, um, I hit the same spot I hit before over there. You know what, having done it this many times, I'm gonna say there's not like a huge difference in accuracy. I think whatever you're shooting, you need to get out there and practice with it. Paper is really important. I shoot a lot on steel. And that's not the best idea in the world if you want to be accurate. Paper's better because you're seeing where you actually hit. So I probably need to get out here and practice with more paper, right, than steel. But uh, I'm going to say they're kind of like, it's even. You know, you can hit whatever you're shooting at with both of them. If you take time with either one and really think about what you're doing, I think you'll be fine. So let's, uh, let's maybe move on to some steel stuff now just so I can keep shooting and come up with a good idea of what I think, whether or not I should switch over. So I've moved over to steel. Um, I just wanna test out my draw from the holster, my reload, and all that kind of stuff from here and see how it is. Maybe I'll do one of those split screen things with you guys and show you, show you that. So I have a magazine in there. I have a, my backup magazine that I always carry in my pocket. I'm just gonna do the draw. Lola's going to say go, and then I'm going to do the draw, shoot, reload, shoot, okay? All right, shooter ready? Yep. Go.
Okay, empty. All right, <laughs> there you go. Definitely I need more practice doing this for sure, but there you go. So I think I had like six and eight, maybe. Um, that's what I had on there. I don't know, we'll count it when we go back and do it. Okay, so that's with the uh, Glock 43. Let's run over here and put that down. Switch into the the uh, Sig. See if it's comfortable. I'll do it. I usually do a little bit like 335, three. I don't know, 45-ish, whatever works for people. Um, okay, I don't think we actually have these all the way loaded to 10. So I know like capacity is a thing, but when you first start loading these and it doesn't come with a loader. Okay, that one's at 10. So I'll put that as the uh, backup in my pocket. Uh, but when you first get these, it doesn't come with a loader and it is really difficult loading it. It's not just us. Like that one just doesn't want to do it at all. Let's see if we can force it. There we go. Let's see if I can get one more in there. But it's really, yeah, really testing my metal here as a man and I am not up to snuff. I'm not ashamed to say that. Okay. Loaders. Awesome thing. Lola, same uh, same drill. You let me know. We'll right. see if I've gotten any better this time. Okay. Shooter ready? Ready. Go. Get it out of my pocket. Okay, jam. Jam. There we go. Okay. Seems like there was a couple of jams there. I don't know um, if this has any break in. Or anything like that going on with it or if it's the stiffness of that magazine I don't know what's up with that I would definitely have to see those kind of like jams go away in general to be happy with with uh, with the SIG right because you know if you're gonna really use it to save your life you need like you need the gun it needs to be loaded you need to be trained and ready which I obviously you always need more training so I'm not even going to try to give any excuses. I need more training. I need to get out there and train more. But you need then you need the gun to work properly. So, you know, this is brand new. We took this out of the box. We uh, we actually got this in from Gun Prime, which I'm going to uh, sit down here and talk about. But uh, you know, Gun Prime has lots of really good deals out there, and I think right now they have the Sig P365 for what was it, Lola? $4.99. $4 yeah, so um, they did send this out to us for, for us to test it. So whatever that is causing those issues, I think we would have to try to work through it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to do shooting. I'm going to go to single camera and uh, just to make it easier for Lola. It seems like the weather is cleared up, but just to make it easier, I'm going to do a whole bunch of shooting now with the SIG uh, first. See how that is. Then maybe I'll switch back to the Glock 43 and then I'm just going to sit down and talk to you guys about it and I'll probably run in this footage while I'm doing that. So stay right there. Ready? Yes, if you're done modeling. Yeah, it's still. Are you rolling? I've been rolling. Okay. Um, yeah, so to answer that question, it's still drizzling. To answer that question, um, am I going to switch from the Glock 43 over to the P365? Um, I'm going to have to say to you, my immediate answer on that is no, not right now, with an asterisk. And I think I could tell you guys why here if you, uh, you know, if you want to just take a little bit of time to hang out with us here. First of all, I want to thank, um, I want to thank the, the guys from Gun Prime because they're the ones who supp uh, supplied us with this P365 for testing. Um, Gun Prime has a lot of deals. If you're really looking for deals on lots of different guns that are out there, you can find them at Gun Prime. Good guys, good deals. I think this was $4.99, I want to say, at Gun Prime. 
Um, and then I also want to thank Harrison from Harry's Holsters for supplying the holsters that we used here in this video today and that I, you know, my, my personal, the Glock 43 that I carry all the time has Harry's Holsters on it. He's a good guy. He uh, comes on the podcast with us all the time and talks about this stuff. I'm going to do more videos on this to show you guys why I think he's making a quality Kydex holster. And of course he does sponsor the podcast as I said at the beginning of this video. Um, but I think there are some technology, some time, some engineering that goes into these holsters. So I'm, I'm definitely a fan. All right. Now, um, so the big, the big difference, I think, with the P365 and the Glock 43, to me, is the grip. So I feel like when I, you know, I'm getting good purchase on that Glock 43, and I'm going to roll in some footage to show you guys what I'm talking about. So um, both of these have the, the, pinky, the pinky rest on the base. Right, so they both have that. It's not giving me with the Glock 43. You get six rounds. <laughs> that is a negative of the Glock 43. Right, I am not a huge fan of that. I wish um, actually Glock went to the 43X and the 48, which are like um, they're slim nines, except um, they're both double stack. This is single stack, and they didn't do anything else to develop this, uh, which is too bad. I don't, maybe there just isn't anything that they could do, but capacity is definitely a negative for the 43, but I feel like I'm getting good purchase on there, you know, with that pinky rest, I feel like I'm getting a good purchase on it, and then definitely if you switch over to like, okay, I could get two more so I can get up to eight, and then definitely I'm getting good, a good grip on there, right, with that, with that extension, so that works, okay, that gets me to eight, right, um, so with the 43, um, I also feel like I'm getting a better trigger. I just like what that trigger, it's snappier, you know. Um, I feel like I'm getting a little bit of a better trigger with that. Now with the the uh, P365, I just don't feel like I'm getting, um, you know, if you guys can see here, right? So this also has the pinky rust on it. I don't feel like I'm getting as much purchase on this with my pinky. And I think that that's because there's no notch in the P365. So right here, there's no notch that my um, that my finger can like really get up onto that gun. And also, I think that the the uh, the grip here is thinner. So it just gives that whole feeling to me like there's less. So here, let's switch back over. So here, there's a notch. So my my finger right here is. Uh, you know, this is my salute finger, and it's getting in. You can see that it's getting in under there. Um, this is a little bit wider here. It has that swell, a little bit more of a swell right there than this does, than the 365 does. It does have a little bit of a swell, but the whole thing here just feels thinner to me. You know, it really feels thinner in the hand, and this feels like more solid. I'm getting up in there, and uh, with the with the 365, I think. Um, you gotta take out the magazine. You can't close on an empty magazine or anything. So with the 365, I feel like, ah oh man, that, you, do you hear that? That's not as snappy to me. Accuracy wise, I think that it kinda came out as a draw in the beginning. It, it felt to me like I was getting, uh, you know, better with this. This does have, uh, you know, these, I don't know, these tritium, could be, could be tritium sights on here so definitely better sights here than on the Glock and more capacity so you've got 10 rounds 10 rounds in the P365 but the the big thing the big thing for me with the 365 why I'm gonna say no just to not make this a super long video for you guys I don't feel like um, I, I don't like the grip okay that's one I feel like this needs to be worn in a little bit. Okay, so we saw some jams when we were shooting it. And that could be the magazine. The magazine is notoriously difficult to load. So I don't know if we ever got up to 10 rounds just because, you know, like we're making a video and we're doing a whole bunch of stuff. I don't want to fight with it. There is no loader that came in there. I probably would get a loader for this, you know. And it seems to me, though, like this needs to be worn in a little bit. The magazine, the spring needs to be worn in. Maybe that's why we were having some feeding issues with it. Um, and then just that grip that I'm getting on it just doesn't give me like 100% confidence that I personally want before I start carrying it. Uh, it comes close. I think that 
if we see those those jams misfeeds and things like that go away over time then I'm, I'm good with that this probably I think today Lola said we put somewhere between 190 and 200 rounds through both guns so 100 rounds each um, the Glock 43 never had a break in so I never had problems with it I didn't have to put a thousand rounds through it to break it in that's nonsense to me a hundred rounds on the p365 and it's still not fully broken in if it's not broken so in when I put two three hundred rounds in there that's going to be pretty terrible in my book, right? I don't think there should be that much uh, break-in. I think you should put a couple of hundred rounds through the gun anyway before you start carrying it. But, um, you know, I didn't have that kind of issue with the with the uh, Glock 43. So, okay. it's tough. I do, I want more capacity. I want better capacity. So, I think that... If you guys know, I'm not saying no to the P365. I think we're going to keep it. We're going to do further testing. We're going to see if the springs get any better. I'll get a loader because we probably just need to like get all 10 rounds in there and just let them sit in there for some time and all those kinds of things and probably need to put more rounds through it and see if it continues jamming. Um, that would not be that would not be uh, a good thing in uh, in my opinion. And then maybe we can see if we can get that trigger to be better I never I never modify my triggers though so yeah I don't know I, I usually don't modify the triggers on whatever I carry I haven't I haven't done any modifications to the Glock 43 you know um, I feel like I shouldn't have to to carry them so you know to make a long story short I'm gonna say no right now to the P365 from SIG uh, you know, I think we just have to give it a little bit more time and see what happens. Maybe a couple weeks from now, a few months from now, I might feel better about it and I might decide to switch over. I am looking to switch over because I would like to get better capacity. But at this point, I'm happy with the Glock and a backup magazine. I will carry a backup magazine even with the P365. I think that's a good idea. So, I think that's it. Uh, Lola, you can tell me if I'm forgetting anything, leaving anyone out. I want to thank everyone out there. I want to thank all you guys for watching this video. Please, if you're not subscribed to the Hank Strange situation, please do that. Subscribe and ring the bell. And even more importantly than that, I would like to let you guys know that I am on GunStreamer. If you haven't heard of GunStreamer, just search it. GunStreamer.com. Go there. There's a Hank Strange channel as well as a lot of your favorite creators are over there. Um, I like those guys because they are First Amendment and Second Amendment friendly folks. And I actually get to talk to them and work with them. And then they implemented something called Contributus where within GunStreamer you can actually contribute to your favorite content creators like myself. So, and, uh, you know, I encourage you guys to go over there and check that out. Who knows what's going to happen with YouTube, Patreon, and all those other kinds of things. Um, you always have to be prepared. All right. That's it. I'm Hank Strange. On behalf of myself, Lola, we're out of here. See you guys next time. Peace.